Sugar Shane Mosley. Now 36 years old. Flanked by his 16 year old son. And his ever present father Jack. Young again at 36. Three division world champion. A sensational lightweight. A strong and powerful welterweight. And then of course the recent move to junior middleweight. And now back home going after another welterweight belt. You know the ironic thing about the reception he's getting is that Shane Mosley spends a lot more time in New York than Miguel Cotto does. And Shane Mosley is undoubtedly one of the most likable pro he athletes really is. He really in is. all but, sports. You know, his wife, Jin, is from Long Island, and right. they very often drive cross-country from Southern California to the eastern end of Long Island to visit his in-laws. So he's here, you know, quite often. He's <laughs> this is like a second home for him as well. But tonight with the Puerto Rican supporters once again out in force. Feels like a little bit of a road game. Oh yeah, it sure does. In memory of Diego, his dear friend, the late Diego Corrales. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ron Scott Stevens, Commissioner in Attendance, Melvina Latham, and the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest on the 10-point system will be from Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From New York, Wynn Kintz. And from Florida, Peter Tremetera. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Benji Estevez. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, 
damas y caballeros, uh, let's get Silver, official weight 146, one quarter pounds. An outstanding professional record consisting of 44 victories, including 37 knockouts, four defeats. From Pomona, California, the former lightweight world champion, former two time welterweight world champion, and former super welterweight champion of the world. Official weight, 146, one quarter pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 30 bouts, 30 victories, including 25 knockouts. He's the former junior welterweight world champion. He's the undefeated reigning defending WBA welterweight champion of the world, Thomas y Caballeros de Caguas Puerto Rico. Nothing more to say. Miguel Cotto. Can he remain unbeaten? Sugar Shane Mosley. Can he rise to the occasion one more time? Nine years separates them. Now only a few feet separate them. And they are ready. Round one. Mosley, three punch combination, he landed a right hand to the body. Cotto comes in, tried to place that left hand. Mosley wraps up, then creates space, comes swinging in with a wide right hand. It's kind of surprising, huh? I'll tell you what, one habit that Shane Mosley has that could cause him a problem is the fact that he crosses his right hand over to block jabs. Kind of leaves him vulnerable to the left hook. It does. See a lot of fighters do that. You see it starting to inch towards that left side. Yes. That right hand will come over and try to catch the oncoming. But then it's got to get back into a defensive position, which if you fire off the left hook in a timely fashion, it cannot do. Mosley, range finding with that jab. There's that right hand to the body again. Mm -hmm. He's a good body puncher, Mosley. I think, you know, it's overlooked somewhat. That right hand's a little short, I thought, from Cotto. But I think it's overlooked because Cotto's such a tremendous body puncher. I think people tend to overlook that Shane's a pretty good body puncher, too. First half of this first round, Shane working a bit more. Cotto tries to come in with the left hook. Cotto staying patient right now. Back to the inside. Neither man fires off. Well, let's not forget, Cotto is habitually a slow starter. 
Well, you know it's only going to get better from here. Good left hook. left hook. He showed good hand speed that time. Remember what happened in the first round against Zab Judah. So both men have had their moments here in round number one. Seeing the rights to the body from Mosley. Good work with the jab. Now Cotto with a burst of aggression, chasing in with that right hand. Crowd reacting to anything Cotto puts forth. Mosley seems a little bit tight to me right now, Joe. Oh, good, Cotto good, with good a left uppercut. Left like uppercut Cotto. when they were on the inside. The left hand of Mosley was tied up with the right arm of Cotto, but with that left hand free, he was able to let loose with that uppercut. Coming to the end of round one. Mosley's best shot right there, overhand right. Wally, who'd you like there? Cotto. No doubt. You know what you can do. Give me a half of the Give me a little grease for your build your eyebrows. Listen. Yeah, you got a problem with that. All you gotta do, relax, focus, use that gap. Now you know he's gonna keep throwing punches until you hit him with something good to make him stop. And I hear you say, guy don't keep what he's doing unless you do something to make him stop doing what he's doing. And the way to do that. Joe Tessitore and Wally Matthews with you ringside. Round two, Cotto and Mosley. It was a good first round for Cotto, Joe. I'll tell you what, Mosley just seems very, very tight to me. In fact, I thought he was breathing with his mouth open a little bit, like he might have been hyperventilating in the first round. Mosley tries to go back to the body with that right hand. Cotto almost clipped him with a right hand as he took that half step forward. Another thing that Cotto's got to be careful of not doing, he tends to square up a little bit. He starts to backhand his jab a little bit and leaves his entire body square to his opponent. And you notice that Cotto's able to reach him with that left hand. Sure, what was the distance between the two of them? Well, we just seen the two guys together. I know we make a lot about the fact that, you know, Shane's strong. There's a right hand from Cotto. But Cotto has the bigger physical presence just looking at the two of them in the ring right now. Yeah, yeah, Shane looks a little, uh... I don't, I don't want to say lean, but his body looks a little bit narrower. You're absolutely right. Does not have the same look that he has when he fought at 154. You know, this is, excuse me, Joe, this is not unlike the way his fight with De La Hoya started, the first fight back in 2000. And that was Mosley, again, was a little bit tight. He tried to do things a little bit too quickly, and it took him about, I would say, four or five rounds to really settle into the fight. Now, De La Hoya does not have the same intensity of attack that Polo has, so I don't know if Mosley has the luxury of waiting that long in this fight. Triples up that jab. A good jab from Cotto right back at him. Just missed with that uppercut. Had success with that left uppercut in round number one. Whoa, he's, you know, Mosley has missed several times badly with that right hand. He's made himself very vulnerable to a left hook. That was a good left hook by Mosley. Good left hand by Mosley. We'll see if Cotto can react and come back with a left hand in the zone when Mosley goes up top. Two punch combination from Mosley. He's been fine with the right to the body, but when he head hunts with it, he's been off the mark early on. Yeah, Cotto's been able to turn away from it a little bit. And he's actually making Mosley extend himself in a pretty dangerous position. Solid work from the jab of Mosley coming off that hip now. There's a good, good sharp right hand by Sugar Shane. Sharp right hand, and Cotto immediately huh. just fires back. That's typical Cotto, and now Shane comes right back with a right hand of his own. But I'll tell you what. That's 
that's the kind of punch that generally puts Carlo in trouble, and he survived it pretty well. He did. What an exciting finish to round number two as they exchange here. Good, good stuff from the Garden. Wow. Let's take a look at some of that second round action. A real good round for Shane Mosley, although there was a real good left hook to the body by Cotto and a good jab. Most of Mosley's good work came in the second half of the round, Joe. Some of those right hands were the kind that you would think would have put Cotto in trouble, and I'll tell you what, he weathered them pretty good. He did indeed, and it was very interesting to hear the comments from his father and trainer, Jack Mosley, at the conclusion of that second round because he was echoing some of the thoughts you had, Wally, where he was saying, relax, have fun. Don't be tight. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's no doubt that he started out a little bit tight, but he seems to be warming up to his task. Shane holding on with that right hand. That was a good right to the body by Mosley. That was steaming. Right to the midsection. Oh, what a snap jab. Snappy jab. From Miguel Cotto. That right hand moments ago. Lower part of the sternum there. He dug it underneath. Cotto tried to come over the top that time with a right hand. And Mosley once again ties up. There's that uppercut on the inside that he had success with in round number one. Good fight so far here. Yeah, you know, we've only seen these guys in there seven minutes in total, but I'm very surprised by the effectiveness of Cotto's jab so far. Doubles it up, went downstairs, upstairs, didn't bring the right oh. hand behind him, but there's a chopping right behind hand the ear. for Mosley. And Cotto once again steadies himself. So there have been two big right hands that Mosley is able to land, and Cotto not affected the way he once was earlier in his career by shots like that. that were, those were effective, though, I'm telling you, man. Those shots behind the ear, I guarantee you, he felt those. Oh, he's putting something in the bank right there. Big, big shots from Mosley so far, both with right hands. But as we've noted, we've Ooh. seen shots from that Cotto has absorbed that have not worked out that way of continuing on and around like this. Agreed. That was a very, very dangerous uppercut that Mosley just threw. He just threw it a little bit short and didn't quite get Cotto the way he wanted to. Hey, we knew it going in. Miguel Cotto gets hit. I think it's we're going to see more of that uppercut because that's the punch that Judah hurt uh, Cotto with as well early in their fight. It's how he reacts after he gets hit, which is typically the difference with the undefeated Cotto. Right hand to the body from Cotto. Good short hook there by Mosley. Left hand, oh. right hand, and there's that left hand of his own, and Mosley comes right back with a right hand. Mosley is committed to the cause, and there's a right hand by Cotto. Back and forth they go, double right hand, one to the body, one upstairs, swinging away. Cotto comes back. Boy, this crowd is getting their money's worth, and they're only nine minutes Tremendous. in. Tremendous. Tremendous Mosley not disappointing at all. Wow. Second look at some of that, Joey. I mean, you know, once is not enough. We got to see some replays from round three. Here we go. And you see that right hand by Mosley caught Cotto behind the ear, then he follows it up with another one, which kind of grazed. And now Cotto, who's actually his hand speed has held up very, very well, I think, in comparison with Mosley's. You see that right hand may have wobbled chain a little bit. Everybody got a towel. Oh, oh. With a towel. Okay. 
Everything is working. The words that came out of Jack Mosley's mouth moments ago. Hmm. Now well, the right hand has worked the past two rounds. Wally, how do you have it through three? I gave Mosley rounds two and three, so I got him up by a point. But I'll tell you something. I am very surprised that Mosley is not using his hand speed as uh, Cotto starts very, very well here with his left hook. He is really setting down on single punches like he's, he's determined to knock this guy out. That's kind of surprising, and I think it's a little bit dangerous. And it makes for an entertaining fight. Oh, yeah. No, for our purposes, it's great. Shane opens up. But he's been true to his word. I'll tell you what, Joe. He told me on, the other day, and he said it at the press conference, that he was going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cotto. And, and he's done it. Oh, he's done it. Short right yep. uppercut. Very effective. Cotto tries to come back with a right hand to the body. Shane puts a left hand to the body. Cotto back with a snap jab. Tries to chop down with the right hand. He's had success the past two rounds with that. Combination wow. from Cotto. Very good. Body punches. Two of them come in, as does a left hook upstairs from Cotto. Snap jab. He's had success with that, utilizing it so far. Both men. Trying to send uppercuts on the inside with one arm free. I'll tell you this, Joe. If, if Mosley cannot get more of a reaction out of Cotto, he's in for a bad night here. Even though I've got him with an early lead here. If he can't hurt Cotto, Cotto's going to walk through him like he did walk through Judah and Malinaji. Good, solid right hand from the undefeated champion. Overhand right uh, again from Mosley. Yeah, but no real reaction. That's been the thing that has been so shocking. These are big, thunderous shots that Mosley's sending yep. off. Let and me he tell you, is something. not staggering Cotto at all. If we're shocked, you can imagine how Mosley feels. Remember that question mark we put next mm -hmm. to the chin in yep. our lead up to this? Oh, you can remove it. See a little frustration in Mosley there? He knows what he's accomplished and what the results should be, but they're not the results he's getting. Wow, Mosley really drove that right hand in that time. There have been five or six of those, but Cotto is still right there in front of him, firing back. Comes back with a short left hand. Crowd reacts, Mosley charges forward again. Good, solid fourth round. Boy, oh boy. They're both fighting a great fight, but right now, if I had to make a call, it looks to me like Cotto's going to wear him down. Yet may be behind on the scorecards. Yeah, but he's... But you have a sense as to where things are headed. Absolutely right. Right, let's take a look. First of all, Mosley with the uppercut. Look at this. Beautiful. Snaps his head back. No reaction from Cotto. Now let's see Cotto, whose hand speed has been surprisingly good. Beautiful short left hook. Fifth round, welterweight title fight. Right back to the jab, right hand from Cotto. Mosley fires back a right hand of his own. Now working underneath. On the inside, Mosley tries to push back. Wow, I, you know what? I really don't know if Mosley can maintain this pace, I swear. This is a brutal fight, and it's Cotto's fight. Brutal is a descriptive that you can often apply to a Miguel Cotto fight. Yeah, this is his fight, huh? And it's a descriptive that he welcomes. Yep. And it's not something that you would generally apply to a Shane Mosley fight. Not at all. Stylistic, speed, tactical, smart. None of that applies here. 
And the decisions you make, maybe to hang on just a little more, just yep. a little longer when you get to the inside instead of working. And you want to know something, Cotto hasn't even really started working the body yet. No. He's been utilizing the jab, right hands, mixing in a left hook. See some wow. swelling. You see some swelling on the face of Shane Mosley. And I see some and fatigue. Look. The mouth is open. Yep. Halfway through this fifth round, Cotto just forces you to go to a place that's not comfortable. Nope. Place you do not want to be. I got to say, I'm very, very impressed with Cotto so far. Been able to match him for hand speed, and he stood up to the punching. And this is a Shane Mosley that's not exactly disappointing. No, no, Shane's very good. Wow, good short punch inside by Cotto. We'll have those opportunities throughout. And he has that kind of build and that kind of torque where all it takes is six inches to turn that over and make it effective. There's Good that shot. chopping right hand that Mosley has had success with throughout the early goings here tonight. Well, you know, here's the thing about Cotto, man. Look Cotto, at that. Two punch combination. Steps forward after absorbing that right hand and delivers. You know what? I was going to say, you got to get Cotto early because he gets stronger and stronger as the fight goes on. He's a boulder going downhill. Yep. Shane tries to fire off that right hand again. Lands one. Cotto, uppercut on the inside before Good Shane shot. lands a left hand to the body to close out that fifth round. Jim Mosley seated ringside. She's Her liking husband. the fight. Use your body I get the unshakable feeling, Joe, that Mosley is tiring and he's not going to get better. You can Let's take a look at some Cotto action here. He had a real good round number five. You see the left hook in there, and I think the big surprise, the story of this fight so far has been two stories. The inability of Mosley to hurt Cotto and the ability of Cotto to match hand speed. If you showed me some of the punches that Mosley landed in the first half of this fight before the fight, I would have told you it was going to be his night. Yep. Not the case. Correct. And you're only going by history, the history of both guys. You wouldn't be wrong to think that. A puncher at 147 pounds who is glad to be back in eight-ounce gloves against the guy whose chin has been questioned throughout his career. Yep. But tonight, he is as strong as he's ever been, Miguel Cotto. And I don't know how you do that. I really don't know how you strengthen the chin, but Cotto has found the way. Well, I think the one thing that you can say for sure is that at 147 pounds, and the more he matures into 147 pounds and figures out how to be the right 147 pounds, his yes. foundation is better. Yeah, he, it, it gets easier for him to get to the weight without, you know, without dehydrating, without, you know, killing himself. Which affects the chip. Absolutely. Wow, uh, see, the jab from Cotto has really been, for me, the punch of the fight. Wow. by Cotto. Shane looking for an opening underneath. Instead, Cotto driving home, a left hand to the body. Shane misses over the top of the right hand. Snapping jab from Cotto. 
minute to go here in round six. And, and notice something now. Shane's getting on the pony. Yeah, he's backing he's up getting a bit. Out of he's up on the toes. He's starting to rethink his whole idea of how he was going to win this First fight. First we've seen of it. Shane wow. Mosley circling. Mark it down. Minutes to go in round six. Left hook by Cotto comes in. Shane Mosley is circling. He has tasted the power. Yep. He's he, realizes, he realizes the strength advantage. And things have changed. And he's looking to gather himself and recalculate this formula. And you know, I was going to suggest this change a couple of rounds ago, but I thought, nah, you know, maybe he's just got to keep hitting them, keep hitting them, and uh, mostly he's come to the conclusion that it's not working inside. He looks a little weathered here as we come to the end of round number six. Swelling in the face, mouth open, backing up, circling out, and still the bull comes forward. Looking to trample. Miguel Cotto finding his way as we reach the halfway point of this welterweight title fight. Beautiful right hand counter by Cotto. Watch. He reads Shane as he dips. Boom. Right over the top. That's a great shot. And he's not neglecting the body either. Take a look at this. He misses with that left hook over the top. I thought we were going to see a body punch there, but it's a pretty good left hook. But I tell you right now, we are watching one fighter really come into his own here, and it's not Shane Mosley. Now we can get back to that discussion of the age difference. I don't know. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to take away from Cotto's performance no, right now. Not at all. And I know you're not trying to either. But I think Shane is fighting well. He's not fighting like a 36-year-old man. No, this is as good of a 36-year-old man as you're going to see in terms of speed. But this is a 27-year-old man who clearly clearly is entering the prime of his career. You know, he gets better every time I see him. That was a good shot there by Mosley, a right hand over the top. It's the one thing he can hang his hat on in this fight. And it's the one thing you know will still be available with Miguel Cotto. Cotto now trying to cut off the ring. Mosley catches him coming in. Cotto separates with a left hand. Mosley now trying to keep his distance and try to get he's trying to get Cotto to commit himself first so he can lunge in and then counter. Catch him coming in. But you know Cotto's a, a little smarter than that. Again, you see he's able to reach Mosley with the jab, and that really does surprise me. Every time you see Mosley drop his hands like that and kind of wave them back and forth, that's a sign of frustration. The right hand by Mosley. Cotto comes oh, right man. back. Comes right back and returns fire. He's done it throughout the night. Just when Mosley thinks that maybe, just maybe, a good shot can turn things around. Cotto is there to meet him. I'll tell you what, Cotto is a killer of spirit. He really is. He just he he plunged you into despair. Mosley. Look at that. Mosley landed in the punch and then backed off. Land a right hand like that. Typically you're going to follow it up. Come in on a guy who's covered up like that. Not the case. You can just see it. Cotto is just squeezing the life out of Mosley. Double jab works his way into the front door. Mosley tries to fight his way off of that position, but the left hook came in. Another right hand trying to get over that left of Cotto. Cotto 
Shane Mosley, end of seven. And you know what? Shane Mosley's now going to have to come up with plan C. Right, here's Cotto with Mosley, who's back against the ropes. Here's that right hand, and Mosley, as we knew, has a terrific chin because he's taking some great shots. Now Mosley comes back. Watch this right hand. I mean, that's a good shot. And you know what he does? He backs up. He says, okay, that didn't work. Now what? Wally Matthews, how do you have it through seven? Well, I'll tell you, I have got most, I've got Cotto a, uh, an expanding three-point lead, 68-65. I have not given Shane Mosley a round since round three. Round number eight. Welterweight title fight. Much anticipated showdown. Bridging the generation gap. From the 36-year-old superstar to the 27-year-old undefeated star in the making. Mosley just looks, you know, if not exhausted, on his way there. Seem like his hand speed has improved. No, it's 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 you and his hand speed has improved. You're absolutely right. Or let's go the other way. Perhaps Mosley has slowed down and we're not noticing it because they're punching at the same speed. Now why would Cotto do that? All of a sudden makes the turn. I mean everything seems to be going pretty well for him. I don't see any reason to turn south far. I know he's a natural lefty, but really. Mosley tried to counter with a right hand. It's like a fly off a windshield. I'll and tell you, man. Just comes forward. What must be going through Shane Mosley's mind now? You know he came in in full belief that when he hits Mo uh, Cotto with those shots, he's going to get a reaction, if not a knockout. And at this point, here we are eight rounds into this, and he hasn't even made a dent. He hasn't made a dent, and he has landed some hammering shots. Oh, yeah. from Cotto. From range, he delivered it. Mosley just has not had enough on his jab really to set anything up with it. And by the same token, you know, in contrast, Cotto's jab has been a ramrod. A very useful weapon for Cotto. He could fully commit to utilizing that jab. Never used it a heck of a lot. No, it's the left hook's been enough. You can almost feel the sense of anticipation is out of the building now. You know what I'm saying? He's done that. It's like this is settled. Yeah. And they watch rounds go by and they cheer as he looks to bring it home. Let's take a look at what Cotto did in round eight. That right to the body and then the right to the head over the top. And there's that jab again, that popping jab from Cotto. Now we'll see that right lead, which came from way outside. Boom. 
I'll tell you what, something happened in the corner of Mosley between rounds there. Do you, did you hear who knew what round it was right away? Mosley. He's keeping track. He's keeping track because that's what a fighter does when they're going into survival mode. You better believe he's like they're counting, counting, they're counting down. Yep. His father, Jack, said flat out, you got to pick it up. Yeah. You he have to hit him harder with those jabs so that we can set up the hook. Well, that's a big question mark. Yeah, and picking it up when your mouth is open and your eyes are looking long and tired is also a challenge. Yeah, Round number sucks. nine. Those lungs are on fire. turn it over and get the front part of the glove. You know, it looks to me like he's taking a rest. You know, I think he knows. Feel. Yeah, he knows he's got a big lead at this point, you know. I don't think he's worried at all about being hurt by Mosley. He may be taking a rest, but Mosley's happy for it. Oh, no doubt. He's doing two guys a favor. Mosley trying right that overhand hand right. from Mosley, the overhand right hand. Good, Good left shot hook. from Mosley. Best one in about four rounds. By far. Timed it right. Cotto just dipped that right hand and it hit the mark. So now Mosley looks to be more the aggressor here with a minute to go in round nine. And you know, we may still get, you know, one of those Miguel Cotto moments where you think, you know, he's done. You never know. He's been controlling throughout these wow. middle rounds. That is something Mosley's got to stay out of because as tired as he is, you don't want to get into a wrestling match. That'll just wear you down more. Oh, yeah. Takes just as much energy to deal with the grappling as it does to throw and absorb punches. How discouraging is that? There's Whoa, a right hand that lands. Right. So Shane Mosley is having his best round by far since the early goings. Yeah. Cotto's right back, though. Oh, man. Cotto comes back just before the bell. But maybe a glimmer of hope for Shane Mosley if he can push know. through these last nine minutes and come up with more of that magic. You understand? Do not wait. Can you hear me? Don't wait on him. You get close enough to him, hit his ass. You don't have no more time to waste. None. You have to hit his ass. All right? You have to hit him when you get to the body, to the head. He's hurt. That's why he's going back. All right, let's take a look. Mosley had a very good round in round nine, but I'll tell you what, I saw something terrible at the end of the round, and I'll tell you after this replay. There's a left hook, which really didn't have a lot on it from Cotto, but you see Mosley's legs at the end of that round. Wasn't really that good a punch, but look at Mosley's sag. It's so funny because the storyline continues. Mosley has moments of success that are actually discouraging. Yeah, absolutely. Discouraging to Mosley. That's a tremendous observation. Chases him down again against the ropes. Round 10. How will it play out? A right Ooh. hand lands from Mosley. And maybe, now maybe, Cotto is affected. Yeah, Let's Cotto see. fell into the ropes. And Wait what a, a minute. He's catching here. What you got a break. He is he catching here. Oh my God. The referee Bentley stopped. Bentley Estevez calls water. for the water to be wiped up at the most untimely moment you could ever pick. After being hit by a right hand and clearly affected, a little pause in the action. 
And even the Kodo Pro Kodo crowd booed. Chanting Mosley. It's amazing. We're at Madison Square Garden where Miguel Cotto put on a spectacular performance for three quarters of this fight. Shane Mosley has rallied back here in round nine and ten, and the crowd is Good rewarding him. him. Okay, hey, you, you know what? They like a great fight. Good for them, but I mean, Mosley has fought valiantly, you know, if not always well. I shouldn't Another say that. He's fought well, over the top. but not always effectively. He could be tightening things up on the scorecards. Yeah, he might be. Both men working with the free hand on the inside now. Still over a minute to go. And what has been a very exciting 10th round. Well, and Mosley is so tired. You can just see lifting that oh. right leg there, being pushed back easily. Good That's a good uppercut. uppercut. Right uppercut comes in. Does a second from Shane Mosley. I'll tell you what, Joe, there's only one word to describe Mosley's effort in this round, and that is gallant. Because he is exhausted. He just got hit with a great left hook. This round must feel like an eternity to him. Oh, feels that way to me. Look at him. There's an opportunity to fire off, and he didn't. His father imploring oh, him, man. you have to work, but Cotto fires back instead. Quite frankly, John, I think you he's won't, given us I everything will. he's got. I think he's you given won't, us. I will, says Cotto. Good left hook. Cotto, late rally here. Mosley trying to meet him punch for punch. They close out the 10th round in style. Wow. Round on its feet at Madison Square Garden. That's tremendous. Take a look at that Mosley uppercut. This is just a beautiful punch, and he slides it right between the gloves. Look at that. I can't say enough about Cotto's chin tonight, and he just keeps coming back every time Mosley scores. He comes right back, and that's got to be discouraging as hell to Shane Mosley. We just head to the championship effort. rounds, round number 11. Wally, how do you see it so far through 10 rounds between Cotto and Mosley? You know, you're right about tightening up the scorecards. Right now, I've got it 96-94 for Cotto because I gave the last two rounds to Mosley. So conceivably, Mosley's in this fight. I just get the feeling that he is so wrung out. I don't know what he's got left. I think depending how you scored the fourth round is the uh, differential in this fight. I agree with you. Last two rounds to Shane Mosley. Those middle rounds to Cotto. Early going, we know what we saw. As Mosley won round two and three with the big right hands, and Cotto took the first round. So things have indeed tightened up here. Lunging left hand to the body. The left hook lands to the body from Shane Mosley. Cotto to the inside wow. with a short, crisp right hand because he, he countered that missed left hook perfectly. I mean, you can't do it any better than that. Another right hand comes in. Mosley digs left twice hooks. with two left hooks to the body. Now Mosley chopping with right hands with Cotto against the ropes. And Cotto's the one who looks to get away. That was a pretty slick move by Cotto. I didn't think he had it in him. Wow. Just missed the right hand. A right uppercut by Cotto. We got some blood on the right side of the motion. That's what I'm looking at right now. See if we can get a good look at it. 
Certainly a lot of swelling. He's, he's getting that soft look around both of his eyes. Toto, good work with that free left hand for a moment there. Mosley tries to turn that uppercut into something. See a lot of swelling around that right eye of Shane Mosley. Yeah, his whole face, you know, from the nose up is very soft. Remember what Cotto was able to do to the right side of the face of Pauli Malinaji. Oh, I'd rather not. Last 20 seconds. Cotto backing off round. right now. He's done it a couple times in this yeah. round. Mosley's turned into the hunter. Well, what an effort though by both guys, huh? Mosley really turned things around in round number nine. He became the aggressor, and it oh. works. Cotto now. Wow. The twists and turns that each and every round has had in these last three has been spectacular. Incredible. One round to go in this showdown. Shocking on the ringside scorecards if this was a determining round. Uh, it would be to me, I must be honest with you. I well, you just had it 96 94. Yeah, but I just get the last round. round. Get last round yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you have a margin. Yeah. Believe me, I was in love with the idea of the turnaround for Mosley as well because it's very dramatic, but I think Polo won that round. And I think Cotto Mosley needs a knockout. Cotto definitely did some stuff in the final minute of that round. Yeah. After Mosley came out in the first minute, you'd rather fire last than fire first. Absolutely. And I think the turning point in the round was that missed left hook by Mosley and uh, Cotto the countered short it. right hand. And then after that, you know, he really was never the same. So I think Mosley needs a knockout. When I hear yes. Jack Mosley saying, use your legs, I hope he means, you know, to drive in with your punches. And right, not to run. get away. Because you need this. No doubt about it who has won the battle. In just judging this as a fight of one man imposing his will on the other, Cotto has gotten the best of it. But Mosley, that's a slip. Mosley has had his moments, has courageously fought back. He really has, and you know, Cotto, I guess he's doing the smart thing here. He's actually trying to stay away. He doesn't want to give Mosley the chance of, you know, that last gas knockout that pulls out the fight. I was kind of surprised, though, to see Cotto backing up in this 12th round. Agreed. He banked a lot of rounds in the middle of this fight. Yeah, I think he knows it. I mean, let's face it, nobody knows better than the two guys in the ring no how doubt. this is going. Now, to me, Mosley's got 56 seconds right now to get this done, and I just don't think he's got it. Look at that. Complaining of a clash. Yeah. Got to fire off at some point. Good right. Instead, it's Cotto, and blood now streaming down the right side of the face of Miguel Cotto. And it's too late to make any difference. Well, you know what? Let's give Cotto his props, man. 
He met Shane Mosley for hand speed and stood up to the punching power. And I don't think anybody would have predicted either of those things. The chin, always been a question mark. The hand speed thought to be a big edge for Shane Mosley. Both those questions answered by Miguel Cotto. Shane Mosley found a lot out about the younger welterweight. The WBA champ. Undefeated and at home here at Madison Square Garden. Puerto Rican fans very appreciative of what they saw from their champion and what they saw from one of the all-time greats, Shane Mosley. One of the questions we asked before this fight was at 36 years old, does Shane Mosley really want to deal with the tenacious non-stop mauling and determination of Cotto? Well, he was willing to. I don't think he liked the result, though. You see the swelling around the face. His mouth opened up halfway through this bout. Cotto seemingly unaffected by the numerous right hands to the head that Mosley was landing. He fired back. He walked right through them. And he kept coming. Wally Matthews now has made his way to the ring. Wally, you got a good look at Shane there? Yeah, I got a pretty good look at him, and he, he sounds uh, like he's okay, but uh, he is battered. I tell you what, both cheekbones are uh, very swollen, and uh, the eyes are bloodshot. He's been in a war tonight. Trying to listen in here to the conversation and see if they think they won. Of course, we're going to find out for real in a couple of seconds. The judges for this championship fight, Win Kintz from New York, Peter Tremetera from Florida, and the well-respected Glenn Feldman from Connecticut. You can see the swelling around the cheekbones of Shane. Meanwhile, Miguel Cotto looks pretty good. Absorbed those right hands well, was able to handle it. And now could be Ladies moments away from win from number 31. Sports arena in the world, Madison Square Garden, two of the very best in the world stepped into the ring tonight. And we go to the scorecards. Glenn Feldman and Peter Tremetera. Both have it 115, 113. Winkins, 116, 113 to the winner by unanimous decision. Damas y caballeros de Caguas, Puerto Rico. Still on the field. And still, WBA, Welterweight, champion of the world, Miguel.